If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. I got a trivia question for you. What? What, what deadlifts 880 pounds, bench presses 650 pounds, can squat 950 pounds, and can overhead press 400 pounds? And 90 pounds. Here's your three choices. A mythical centaur. Here's your three choices. A polar bear. Yeah. (laughs) The Incredible Hulk. Or rhinoceros. Mm -hmm. Or Robert Oberst. (laughs) Which one do you think? I'm going to go Incredible Hulk. Which one do you think? For 5,000. Wrong. Uh, Adam, what's your choice? Uh, I I think the polar bear. Both wrong. Actually, that's what Justin said, and you said it too. He knew he was wrong. (laughs) You're a terrible test taker. No. It's actually Robert Oberst. The human uh, Sasquatch. This is he's a massive human being, <laughs> but less hairy. Super nice Somewhat. guy too. We met him. Uh, in, he's awesome. We were in L.A. podcasting, and uh, I forget. I always forget that people are that can be that big. Yeah, he's there, fucking huge. There's not. It's there's not a lot of uh, men that make me feel like a like a little child. Oh. You know, next to and we he literally we, picked you up and rocked you. He, no, he, he did like he, a baby. Yes. He picked you up like, like a, a little child. Like a baby. You know what sucks about a guy that big? Um, if he wanted to rape you, you couldn't do anything about totally. it. Totally. Like I, I mean, feel that's like the, that's the first thing you think of. <laughs> I feel like that when he when he scooped me up, that's what I uh, thought. I thought, oh god, he either take, w- he uh, yeah, he either wants to eat me or either wants to <laughs> yeah. rape me. Either one yeah. of them. This this is gonna go down well for me. Five oh five. What am I gonna do? You know what's worse about that? That because that would suck, right? If he's eating you alive, like that would suck. That'd be a terrible thing. Yeah, it would be bad. But what would be worse is that me and Justin couldn't help you yeah we would we would be crying watching it yeah we would be praying yeah. and watching yeah what do you think like <laughs> i i wonder how many like normal sized men that he could just handle and take on on his, on his own because there's no doubt at least multiple like yeah, i mean yeah, there's yeah. two yeah. normal sized men you're not fucking with him he could yeah. take on two big normal sized guys at least maybe up to four mm-hmm. and he could take on at least i don't know 30 to you 40 imagine getting dog piled by him yeah. Yeah. average ah! Like small, hipsters, small uh, people. Yeah, oh, uh, hipsters, yeah. yeah like you're a pancake. He, easily, he could easily fuck yeah. up. 30, anyway, 40 totally a pancake. He's a super cool guy. He's got a great story. Uh, he's got a. He's a fucking a, world record holder, he's bro. A, he's got a rivalry with uh, a British strongman competitor. Oh, that's right. Uh, you hear about it in this episode. So we had a lot of fun talking to Robert Oberst. Now you can find him on Instagram. He's got an awesome Instagram page where you can see him lifting various objects of massive size. His Instagram page is at. Robert Oberst, O-B-E-R-S-T. So here's Mind Pump talking to Robert. I'm actually just getting ready to head to Houston for uh, like a training camp for World Strongest Man. And I'll be training at a place called Jet Engine, Jet Engine CrossFit. Now, let me, okay, so when is the Strongman competition, the World Strongest Man? We don't know the date. It's uh, looking like maybe around April. April. And um, it's always rumors until you get real close. But I know that we have. Uh, what? Why? What is that? Why would it? Man, that's I a great question. Yeah, like, it's it's one of those things. They, they've got their reasons for it. Mostly, I think it's they just don't want people to be out there. They they like to hold the um the results until it comes out on TV. Oh, so, I see. I mean, it's weird though because it's 2017 and social media everyone yeah. knows everything. Yeah. You know, right, like, right. Like, it's gonna Jesus. leak. You think it's just like an old way and it just hasn't changed over? Yeah, it's it. I think it's that, but that's just my guess. You know, right. like I don't really know, but um, that it just tends to be that way. We get like like we went to Africa and I think I had five weeks notice, four and a half. Like literally, I had to get my shots within two days, or I wouldn't have been able to go. Oh, wow. yeah. So when you so you know it's in April, or you think it's in April, right? When do you start training for that? Well, uh, with worlds, it's different. Like normally, normally I wouldn't start specific training until like maybe two and a half months out, about. But worlds is just it's so many options. You never know what you're gonna do. Oh, okay. You know, like we have we have prelims and we have finals, and. You know, I mean, it's it's anybody's guess what the events are. So when so when you say specific training, you mean specifically for the events? You know, yeah, wow, yeah. So like, I'm I'm gonna go by what I what I think's happening and what I know from history and studying it and everything, and um, I'm gonna train for that. It's it's always gonna be it's always gonna be a loading event. It's always gonna be a press and uh, some type of deadlift. We've been doing a lot of squats lately, so I'll be ready for that. Basically, you got to be ready for everything when World Strongest Man comes mm-hmm. around yeah. and. Right before that, we have Log Lifting World Championships in London, and um, I'll be there for that, and I want to break the world record. I have the American record right now. What is it? 
It's 210 kilos. Oh, or 200 shit. and... Fuck, I don't know. <laughs> you don't even know your own record. <laughs> you don't have to know. You don't have to know. You killed it. Bro, you don't know your own record. <laughs> Come on, it's bro. Heavy, oh, no. right? I remember the way it felt on my chest. <laughs> that's oh my what God. I know. Bro, you ask anybody. That's how heavy it was. <laughs> yeah, it's heavy. You just don't even want to remember <laughs> it. You get, once you get that strong, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you ask anybody in this room what our PR is for yeah, curls. Right. You and know. Yeah, you know. Keep to the ounce. Yeah, yeah. He's, <laughs> he's like heavier than everybody else. That's yeah. what I know. So so what does what? how much of your training is this specific type training and how much of it is just focused on on like core lifts oh well, um right now it's three days a week core and then one uh, more strongman events but i'm kind of i'm kind of transitioning into a new idea i've i've been doing this for for almost five years now and i feel like i've adapted well i relied a lot on my my football training and my strength background from that kind of stuff so now i'm i'm using more i guess i feel more like a vet than a rookie anymore so mm. i'm kind of switching my idea and i do a little bit more of the like i'll do stones in the middle of the week and i'll do them on on a sunday stuff like that it's it's kind of sprinkled in more now so that's a very long way of answering <laughs> but, uh, what led you to go that direction and start training like that i just i felt like i wasn't getting enough time under the weird stuff you know like there's no there's no there's a lot of skill involved yeah that's a, and, and you, you can't mimic a stone really right right yeah, a million yeah. zerchers still is not the same as his own exactly right and yeah. after i'd see I'd, i mentioned earlier i lost um, like about 75 pounds and after i did that I was training for a show in Texas, which I won, by the way. Kicked the shit out of everybody. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> I was yeah. chugging probably beers halfway the through. <laughs> probably, for, probably forgot the weights, but I fucked uh, everybody up. I don't know up. the weights, no, <laughs> no, I know it was doing, heavy. I'm doing more. <laughs> it was good, though. We did, there was five events, and by the third event, I walked out in the crowd, and I was taking beers from people in Stone Cold, Stone Cold <laughs> Stunning. Yes. I, mean, I was chugging. Yeah. It was good. Uh, and um, so for that show, I switched it up a little bit because I wanted to feel what it was like under my new weight. Uh, and, and stuff is just, you know, when you're running with a thousand pounds on your back, you uh, you want to know what it's going to be like after losing that much weight. So I did it for that show. I came out and crushed it. And I kind of just adapted my mm. training from there. Why'd you lose um, the weight? A couple reasons. Um First, it was just I was too big. I was 440, wow. and I didn't feel You good. are a massive human. <laughs> yes. I'm a skinny 365 now. <laughs> so um, at the time, I mean, everyone runs rams it down your throat that you got to be as big as possible to be strong. Mm -hmm. And it's this this idea in strongman and in powerlifting, and, and it just it got kind of worn into my head that I needed to be as big as I could be. So I would, I would eat everything, and I, I would, you know, keep my cardio to a minimum and i did what everyone else said that we should be doing and it just didn't work for me i remember i went up on the the arnold stage and <clears throat> man when you step up there there's just thousands and thousands of lights mm. flashing off going off and everything it was this is the second biggest show other than this one i just did in london or in uh, manchester this was the biggest show i'd ever done get up on that that stage and you're elevated over everybody and i remember taking the steps up the stairs and walking out on the stage and I was out of breath and I was like, fuck man, like mm. this, this isn't how it's supposed to be. I felt like crap. I didn't perform well. I just, I basically wasn't good with being that heavy. Yeah. So, um, that really changed everything. And then I have a, I have a two year old son. And so like, I'm, I am, all, I'm all about being there and being around and playing with him when he's 15, 16 right. and all mm -hmm. that, you know, like I'm not, I'm not trying to be tapped out before that. So, did you did you recognize that you know pushing your body that extreme before that like could be unhealthy for you and you just knew it didn't give a fuck anyways? Like, yeah. wh what's your mindset? That's exactly it. I was willing to do whatever it took. Mm -hmm. um, I I got to the point where it didn't matter what the end result was for me. It mattered what I had done before that. You know? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't really care. And that changes when you have a kid. It changes when when other things that happen in your life and you realize like you are more valuable than the sport in itself, it's, it's a good feeling. Yeah. You know? And so do you, are there are things that you look back and go like, fuck, that was crazy. I was doing that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, at, the, at that Arnold specifically, we did a 1600 pound yoke. <laughs> and, um, no, I'm, I'm not trying to bag on the Arnold, but it's also, it's, it's a, it's a ridiculous lift and they cut it out. It's not going to be there this year. And, um, this, the stage is just, 
it's not concrete. It's like it's it's a stage and it's got rubber mats. So basically, every time you step with sixteen hundred pounds on your back, you sink like a half inch at least, at least a half inch. Oh my god! And that, that thing is weird. Oh my god! I remember feeling my spine, like the tail end of my spine, just shifting back and forth as I'm Ooh. stepping. And and I'm thinking to myself like. Like, this is probably going to make it to where I'm not going to be able to walk one day, you know? And there's, I think, three or four guys who have legitimately, two of them ended their careers and two of them had to have crazy surgeries just because of that one, that one event. Whoa. So wow. it's it's one of those things that I wish I would have just been like, no, nah, I'm cool. Yeah. I'll skip the Arnold. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, about the, what about some of the extreme measures you probably had to take to get to put the weight on to, to be 440? Dude, it's not that bad for me to get to 440. Really? really? You're like, I could just cruise there if I wanted to. I mean, I'm starving myself for 360. Yeah. Oh, I am, man. I'm, I'm 10 pounds lighter than I graduated high school right now. Holy what? shit. Hold on a second. So you've always been Ridiculous. a big, Hold on, hold on a second. Yeah. You were 370 yeah. pounds yeah, in high wild. school? 76 or something like that at the the Nike combine when you uh go as a senior like if you get invited mm -hmm. um you go and you get measured and weighed and everything and I was like 376 377 something like that just a big human yeah. just big, always man no I mean I was short and really chubby for a long time and then over one summer did you get picked uh, on yeah a lot I bet those guys Dude. regretted that shit when you went through your growth spurt. Well, they all kind of just faded away yeah I bet know? they did <laughs> yeah. they ran for the hills yeah, it was done after yeah. that you know? but um, over one summer I was working in a camp and I came back and I'd grown seven inches in one fucking summer. Oh my God. So like, I remember being in my tent and like rubbing on my legs and stuff all night. Cause they hurt so bad. But, um, came back and I was awkwardly linked, like all lengthy and stuff for like probably six months before I caught back up. Oh, that's crazy. Wow. wow. What got you into this sport? Uh, in the first place, I mean, you've done strength sports in the past. No, I was just football man. Okay, I wasn't trying to be the best at lifting weights. I was trying to be an athlete, and um, I enjoyed it in in the gym. I enjoyed training in the gym with football. I was always one of the stronger guys, and um, I I like to push like maxes and different things. One of the things though, like we would hang clean instead of deadlift, and so I remember trying to have the biggest hang clean I possibly could, and I, like mm -hmm. just loving the idea of being better at it. And then uh, I was done with football, and I was working at a at a, a club in Santa Cruz called the Catalyst, uh -huh. which is it's a great oh, good, time, yeah. good times there. I had you so probably many took good my stories. ID there a few times. I'm sure, <laughs> yeah. Man, I had I had a blast. There. Actually, it's so crazy you say that. Stories. You do look. I know. I yeah. was gonna say now it's all coming together. I, I was I was usually there. working the front, or if there was a big artist, I was hanging out in the back with them. Okay. Like I would always be one of those two spots. Man, you must have seen some cool shows there, dude. Huh? I had more fun than i should have <laughs> so much fun um it was a good time so i was there and there was a buddy of mine from junior college uh who was an amateur strongman and he just kept begging me to do it he was so obsessed he was so obsessed with strongman i'm sorry evan i'm gonna tell a story <laughs> <laughs> Throw him but, um, yeah i even said his name evan from santa cruz california <laughs> <laughs> oh man we uh we, we he was so obsessed with Strongman, like, he couldn't not talk about it. So there'd be, like, a pretty girl or something at the show, come talk to him, which was rare, because Kevin, Evan is an ugly guy. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and he would just talk to him about truck pulls or something. I remember, I remember we were in Colorado. Like, this will get him interested. This, yeah. <laughs> we were in Colorado, and uh, it's a rare thing for me to go to a strip club. I think I've only been, like, four times in my life. I just don't see spending money like that. Yeah, that's why I say, too. <laughs> it's a waste yeah. of money, man. Yeah. It's like buying water. What are you doing? <laughs> so, um, <laughs> that's an ice cube quote don't give me credit <laughs> but um we were at a strip club and evan just looked so uncomfortable so i bought him a dance and the, the, the girl took him to the private room or whatever we're all hanging out and um he comes walking out like way too early for it to be over way too early and he just walks past us and she comes and sits down next to us and she was talking about, I had no idea Strongman had, had that much detail to it. <laughs> and she like, was like just wowed that he didn't have any interest in anything other than oh talking about God. Strongman during the day. <laughs> so he was the first him. one to probably turn yeah. you on to it. I he think. was. He was. He got me to come in. And uh, day one, day one, I tried the log press and uh, broke the, the amateur world record. The, the first, first time you attempted time. it. Yeah. It was like, I think it was 310 was the record at the time. Or I don't remember what it was. And. I hit like just barely over it and put it down. And um, 
Oh, uh, shit. I think it might have been novice wreck. I don't remember. It was I hit like close to three fifty the first time I'd ever touched a log. Mm. I remember putting it down and, and being like, So was that any good? And he was like, Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> you know? So Dude, at that point were you like, Oh man, I'm made for Wow, this. I guess I'm that switch this. hit or what? It, yeah. it, it, I was it, man. That was it. I went home and uh I had to Google it and figure out what it all was about and everything. I never really watched. So um I looked it up and studied a lot of tape like I did with football, watched a lot of YouTube. And then I was I was in, man. I knew I could make it work if I just dove all the way in. Now, do you do you handle uh, your own programming, or do you have somebody who does that for you? Like, how does that work? I do I do my own programming for the most part. Um, right now, I'm actually getting help with deadlift. I'm I was saying um, I'm about to head down to Houston and do a training camp for World's Strongest Man, and um, I'm addressing my weakness, which is deadlift. And I'm getting help from uh, Kale Beck, who runs StartingStrongMan.com. Mm. And he's he's been helping me a lot, actually. He's actually been, uh, like, guiding me through a lot of my training stuff whenever mm. I need to transition. What do you, Since he's been teaching you, what are you noticing with your dad? Is it mechanical breakdown somewhere, or what, what do you notice? It's just, it's, from, uh, in my case, it's mostly just I haven't been doing it enough, long mm-hmm. enough. Mm-hmm. Like, I went from never deadlifting to that day I did that 350 or 340, whatever I did that log that first time I tried it, I tried to deadlift max as well. And I could barely pull 400. Till fast forward like seven months later, I'm in England and I pulled 400 kilos. Oh, and like, it was just too much too quick. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so it wrecked me. My lower back was bad. I pinched a nerve. Uh, I pinched my sciatic and I was, my legs were numb for about two weeks. And then it was so bad that I was sleeping in my car because I couldn't lay down. I had a studio in Coralitas, which is, man, if you're ever in Santa Cruz, Coralitas is a spot. Yeah. But um, the meat market, shout out to the best meat in <laughs> yeah, California. <laughs> but um, I, was, I had a studio, so I didn't have like a chair or anything like that. So I would sit in my truck and sleep at night. And I had to do that for a couple of weeks. And I was still training at that time, too. I was getting ready for nationals. So I was still training and doing everything I could. So you're sleeping in a truck yeah. and you're training still for this yeah. while your back is all fucked. And I'm like, wow. yeah, it was that's that Gnarly. fuck it, I'm going to do what it takes attitude. That's wow. that shit right there. Mm. I was just not going to fail. Are you doing like mobility work now and stuff with that? I or do is a that... lot of that stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm great. way more, way more into keeping myself healthy now. I do. I. There's also this weird thing with strongman and with heavy lifting, this whole, like, we don't warm up thing. Yeah. It's ridiculous. And at the time, I just listened to people, you know? Like, when other people have been successful and you're around them, you're just like, okay, like, I'll, I'll take what you say and I'll, I'll, I'll try it. And that's, it's, there's just a lot of bullshit information out there, man. That's one of the reasons I'm, I'm doing my best to, like, kind of promote this new style where you can actually be fit. You can actually warm up and stretching isn't bad and yeah. cardio is cool, you know? So talk about more of that. I want to expand on that because this is a lot of what motivated us for our show was what we saw kind of more in the bodybuilding industry. So the bodybuilding industry has yeah. the same bullshit. Yeah. All these, all this bro information that's been passed down. I noticed down. the way yeah. you're training and it was so different from the other strongman I was yeah. looking at. And I was like very curious to, to dive yeah. into that. Shit, I'm the only strongman that's at the level that I'm at that can go hiking and walking. Like I, none of them can. Just like, like everyday shit. Yeah, easy yeah. shit. Like, yeah. I mean, I, I hike four maybe more times a week every time i go anywhere i find a spot and i do it there too and i'm not saying like i'm hiking like kilimanjaro or nothing but like i'll do four five six miles Mm -hmm. and i take my time i don't rush and i also do hill sprints while i'm doing it too but um has it all contributed positively to your performance for sure even just walking around has helped my low back so much Mm -hmm. so much just not being uh like stagnant you know Mm -hmm. just moving around it it it's really important. Uh, guys get caught up in, in routine and comfort and, you know, it just, it becomes a problem, especially mm-hmm. when you work as hard as I do. So you got, you got to loosen stuff up. Now, do you, do you do this full time or? Yeah, this is it. Uh, wow. This What's it, it like making a living competing and being in strongman? If somebody came to you and said, Hey, I want to do it. And, <laughs> yeah. Earn a living doing <laughs> what it. What do you do, man? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh man. Oh man. I'd say I'd say have a backup plan, but have a backup. Plan. <laughs> I'd say go pick up a three hundred fifty pound fucking yeah. log the first day, right? Exactly. Yeah. But three having a backup plan yeah. is also a crutch that's going to keep you from getting it anyways. I didn't have anything. Mm-hmm. I was I was a fucking bouncer for a club doing late night work, trying to figure out what I was going to do with myself because I'd always thought I was going to be an athlete. I didn't have a backup mm-hmm. plan. So when it came down to it, 
I just wasn't going to fail. Like I had nothing to fall back on mm-hmm. and that's what made me do it. You know, and there's a lot of guys out there who've gone down that road and, and didn't make it. There's guys who've done better than me. Guys have done worse than me and uh, never found a way to make it a full-time job. So I'm grateful for that. I, I fucking earned it. I worked my ass off, but I'm very grateful that things came together the way they did. How does that work? Is it mostly sponsorships or is it through self-promotion programs? You're selling, you know, coaching? It's, mo- it's mostly sponsorships. Mm-hmm. Uh, I do coaching. It's not, I've just started doing the coaching. The thing is about coaching, um, I've said coaching six times now, <laughs> coaching. Uh, <laughs> the thing about that is, is you, people will do that as a money grab and it drives me fucking nuts. Mm-hmm. It's the same as the bro science mm-hmm. and all that shit. You're just giving out bad information or just te- template information which I mean, if fine if you have templates, but if if you're selling templates as coaching, then you're a fucking dick, in my opinion. Mm-hmm, right. mm-hmm. You need to actually be able to take the time and watch people work and mm-hmm. have an actual conversation and figure out what people need to do to get better. And if you're doing that, then that's fine. But um, oh man, there's just so many people out there that are like, I've got 600 clients. <laughs> there's no fucking yeah. way <laughs> you can't even <laughs> right. watch 25 people properly. Right. Like, right. There's no way, right. no way. Yeah. That's integrity right there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I I just don't want to be doing to other people what happened to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't like that idea. You know, like it's not, it's not worth the money. Fuck that. Mm -hmm. Do do you think it's changing? Is it changing right now, or do you feel like you're one of the few that are actually preaching that message? Um, the other thing is I don't pay attention to too much. Like I, I see people when I go to expos and I pay attention to a little bit. Like my best friend Kale, the guy who helping me with my deadlift, he fucking won't leave me alone telling me what everybody's doing all the time. Like, I, I have an athlete page on Facebook, so I don't see people's Facebook shit. My my Instagram, like, I'm very active on there, and I follow and, and I check stuff out, but um, a lot of that stuff tends to come from, like, uh, like Facebook or that. that um, it's slightly older. It's, like, an uh, older demographic. It, it just seems... Um, at least, at least in the strength world, I, and now, now that I'm thinking about it, as I say it, like, there's a ton of guys who do like um, that type of coaching on Instagram and mm-hmm. stuff like that, where I would see it, but uh, it's it's a different, it's not strength, right, right? right? Like, it's more like an aesthetic type of lifting, right? Right. Do you have? Are there any strongman athletes, past or present, that you kind of like look up to or model yourself after? Bill Kazmaier. For oh sure. fuck the man, yeah. Bill yeah. fucking Kevin. the man. And, you and know, I, I saw him. I went to an Arnold Classic years ago. Way he's been way retired, and he fucking folded up a frying pan like it was <laughs> like, like it was a piece of paper. Oh, yeah, he and look I, at I thought it that and sh- fold it. I thought that shit was a joke, you know. And he's letting everybody grab it. And I'm like, this is a real frying pan. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And his hands were like, he just. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he's the man, dude. Yeah, and and he, I'm sure he'd be cool with me sharing this. Uh, he and I actually. We got along great, and then we had like a disagreement about something I don't remember, and um, we we had a conversation uh, like four or five months after this disagreement, and we're both very um, straightforward. I'll yeah. say we're yeah. very straightforward. And that's what I loved about him. Like you watch his old shit, and oh, yeah, he's... dude, it makes me want to fucking punch the wall or something. Yeah. Like I love that <laughs> stuff. So he was. Uh, uh, he and I both had kind of a disagreement and it was a few months later and he came up to me and spoke to me and around was around people. I was in expo. He came up to me and he was like, Hey man, I, I just want to talk to you about this. I felt, I felt this is what's going on. And we talked about it like, like it was 19 fucking 65 and real men still existed. And <laughs> it was the coolest awesome. thing that I'd ever seen somebody of that stature do. And, like, I was, like, I was blown away. I was fucking blown away. He didn't care that people were standing around. He didn't care that he was, I mean, I, who am I compared to Bill Kazmaier? Like, right. it's, it's not like he was coming over to fucking. Stand-up guy. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Stand-up dude, like a real man. That's yeah. Cool. I was I was so impressed. And, I I mean, I I, I would be very proud to, to uh, represent America the way he has. Awesome, man. Fuck awesome. Yeah. Is there anybody in your in your family that was just real strong? I mean, you've got to get these genes from somewhere. Uh, um, I've got ten siblings, and um, holy shit. cow! Wait, yeah. wait, wait. Ten siblings. Where do, where so there's eleven fall? kids. The, well, now there's eleven. I growing up there was nine. So yes, there's eleven now. I was I'm number eight, and um. No, there was that much food left over Did to you feed eat, you. Eat the rest of them. <laughs> Dude, yeah. we, we never had money, but we grew up um, like uh, going to church and stuff. So we would get church food. 
so we were stock full of food all the time but like i remember it was there was a big part of our life where we were very very poor like the knockoff Fruit Loops and shit like that. Oh man, the knockoff oh, Fruit Loops, the, the the cans, the stuff uh, that dude. say like uh, Deseret Food Industries, on, yeah. you know, all that shit. Yeah. And I was I was I was well fed, but um, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it, there was ten of us and none of them were really big. My brother Dave uh, was a wrestler, and, like like uh, like actual wrestling, and. Um, he he was I'm sure a little bit bigger than average. I don't know. It's hard for me to. Are you are, are you, you that much bigger than everybody else? I'm way bigger than everybody. Really? Way wow. bigger. Yeah, it's not even close. Out of that many kids, yeah. not one other one is so like, not mom, like, dad, mom, grandpa, dad, grandpa, uncle, aunt. Dad, dad's got a size. thick chest. He's he's a little bit shorter than average. Mom's tiny. It's what it is. I think. I mean, is my, what do you look, like my Zeus mom's, came down <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> so Maui. <you> know? <laughs> I, I could sing the whole song too. I got a two year old. I know all. Of, I know all of the songs from, from uh, Moana. Uh, but um, my my dad's dad was thick, like barrel chested farmer guy, and then my mom's dad was tall, and um, I think I just got both of those genes somehow. Best of both. Wow. Right? I guess. Yeah. Wow. That's pretty crazy. That many siblings. Man, yeah. Now, what was that like growing Something. up? Uh, you guys get along a lot? Did you fight a lot when you were little? What was it like growing up? Are you still close? Uh, it was a mix. I mean, it was never it was never fighting like like real fighting. It was just brother-sister stuff. Right. But yeah, we're all very close. Uh, it, the thing about growing up like that, when you have no money and you have 10 siblings is, is you just, you learn how bond to... Bond together. Yeah, you survive. bond and it, mm-hmm. it becomes like you develop that part of you that that's creative, that's that's uh, gonna keep you entertained or keep you f- like growing, building, whatever we would do. Like, cause you know, like we we didn't have the. Well, not only was there not really like games and stuff like there is now, but we didn't even we didn't even have electricity for for a lot of the time. So, I mean. We'd just be outside trying to fucking create stuff. Kick a can. You know? Yeah, whatever. Yeah, we literally played kick the can all the fucking time. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was a compact car for him. <laughs> <laughs> we, had, we had a minivan that didn't work. And um, well, I don't know if this is, sounds so stupid, but we would literally, we had a driveway because we lived behind an orchard. We had a driveway that was like maybe two blocks long. And we would take turns steering while someone else would push down the driveway. Uh-huh. And we would just go back and forth, man. I think that's the first exercise I ever got was pushing the car up and down the driveway. <laughs> so. That's excellent. So I, I want to ask you, uh, nutrition-wise, because every time I, you know, I, I, I look at I look at strongman, I look at the nutrition, I, I imagine myself like they got to be like eating 20, 50, a tremendous thousand, amount yeah. of, of calories. Yeah. How much were you eating when you were up at uh, 440 pounds? I went were you to tracking? 20. I went to t- wide for a little while. We Wait, 20 what? Yeah, 20,000. Damn, Holy I was shit. just joking. No, no we, for did a reals? Video, we did a video for uh, Vice about it, and I did that for a short while. You legit ate 20,000 calories yeah. a day? What does wow. that look like? Like, what is, what is that? I mean, it depends on what, what I'm eating that day. It's not that big of a deal, really. Like, it depends on <laughs> what you put down. I can't do that in five days, dude. <laughs> <laughs> no. But, um, so, like, what would breakfast be? Like, yeah. like give me a rundown. Oh of like a yeah, I want to hear this. Probably, like, 10 eggs-ish. Maybe a little bit more than, um, I don't know. I would always have some kind of carb with it. Like, I basically just ate what I wanted. And then if I didn't eat enough, I would throw more on at the end of the day. So, like, just a bunch of eggs, whatever kind of toast. Um, I had this pasta that I made for that Vice show that I would eat all the time, which is like a family recipe, which is just this big bowl of pasta with a bunch of different um, types of meat and types of, like, go half half pasta sauce or red sauce and uh, half salsa, stuff like that. Or um, the French bread, which the recipe is literally just mayonnaise and cheese over the top. Oh of it. shit! And you Whoa. put that in the oven; it tastes Foster-y. amazing. Like, it's <laughs> just as bad as mayonnaise and cheese, but it tastes so fucking good, oh, man! It's so good. It's not hard to get to twenty thousand calories. When you Hold go on. There. So when you, exactly. when you when you're dieting down, would you go down to like fifteen thousand? Oh no, no, I would <laughs> drop, dude. I went keto for four weeks. I went keto for four weeks, and then now I'm, I don't know the exact number, but I'm guessing I'm right around five ish. Okay. Uh, I have a nutritionist. Nathan Payton does my nutrition. Okay. And he's phenomenal. Like, especially because I'm 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 kind of uh hard headed and nitpicky about stuff with that. Like mm-hmm. I just I wanted it to be very specific and I wanted it to be uh something that I could travel with because I'm on the road so much. So um 
he we dialed it in and it, it's working really now, well. Now, how, how's digestion when you're eating that many calories and stuff? Because it sounds, I mean, you have to be able to digest all that food. Yeah, too. Right. I never really had a problem. I mean, uh, lately I've been switching back and forth between regular whey protein and, and uh, plant protein. Mm-hmm. I work with GAT supplements. Who, oh, okay. So, like, I, John I get Jones spoiled. is a part of that too, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I thought so. So, I get spoiled. I get spoiled with, like, the best stuff. Mm-hmm. And, uh, like, it's. Dude, you can never ask for a better pre workout than Nitroflex. Do you guys take pre workouts? No, 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 I haven't. Yeah, no, 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 why? No? No. Oh, man. Next time you want one, I'll, I'll hook you up. All right, all right, send it over. I'm telling you, that stuff. I'll take one quarter wheeled. of the dose. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so, like, I get spoiled. I have the supplements. So, like, I, I do like whey protein in the morning, and then halfway through the day, I switch to plant protein. And the plant proteins really help me with digestion and everything mm-hmm. else, too. I've also started doing more like kombucha and stuff like that, trying to. Trying to make it um, help that gut. A little yeah, bit, huh? I mean, I. What uh, are some of the things that you notice when you went from you know mayonnaise cheese bread to now like <laughs> really honing in? Your- I was way less happy at first. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I wish I could eat that food and and still weigh three sixty. But um, <laughs> no, I, 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 I went, when I went keto, it was cool. I could tell things were working. Three weeks in, I was freaking out. I was like, Why? calling up because I was my body was just like, what the fuck, you know. I remember I was at the Anaheim Fit Expo, and I do I do expos all the time where I'm meeting people and it's cool and I'm 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 great I'm easy I'm easy to get along with I love like meeting people we have a blast, but I was like just being a dick I just oh, couldn't irritable. shake it I was so irritable and I just couldn't shake it and I called up my nutritionist and I was like what the fuck are you doing to me <laughs> I'm on the road right now I can't be like this you know like so um. Did it about another week. Ended up doing it for a month, and then came back. So right now, I don't do that many carbs. Still, I do like um uh un- one uncooked cup of rice a day. That's about it. Wow, isn't that great? How the body can perform well with all these different yeah varieties. Once you, and shit? Once you make it adjust, your body's a great machine. Yeah, man. right. Yeah. Like you just got to tell it what to do, and then just make it fucking do it. Mm. Like I, I, everyone kept telling me how I was going to lose strength when I when I was doing this, and everyone mm. was was just basically writing me off. And I just was like, nah, I just, I made myself go to the gym. I made myself do everything the same way. And my numbers weren't great at first. It took me about three months to figure it back out. And now I'm stronger than ever. We did the show. In stronger and lighter. That's fucking I mean, faster. You can't beat my that. cardio's better. Yeah, you can't beat that. That's amazing. So much better. We did this show in Manchester, at Giants Live, uh, the finals um, for World Strongest Man, Giants Live World Tour, which is, I'm sure that's not exactly what it's called, but, um, we did that, and uh, I I PR'd on everything. We did a 340 log. Or it might have been 330. We did a 340-ish log for reps, 60 seconds. I did it seven times. Jeez. Wasn't even out of breath afterwards. Yeah. Just put it down. I was going to say the endurance must be a big advantage. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's so big. Yeah. yeah cause like, All we these do guys are shows, gassing out and everything. And everyone else is like huffing and puffing and done, and I'm, yeah. I'm walking around pacing. I literally did that. Walked over to the crowd, took a beer from the guy in the front row and drank it, and I just kept talking shit. Uh, yeah. I was I was letting England know that America was there to take uh, it. Yeah. <laughs> he gave me the microphone, and uh, he what did goes, you say? He said, uh, "No, I took the microphone actually." Okay. He said, "The guy said something about what do I think uh, about England?" And I, I was like, "Well, I I love England. I just can't stand the weather, the food, or the people." <laughs> <laughs> you should have heard twelve thousand people. Oh my God, you- they were no. so mad. The best. Um, I went to do the stones at the end, and we got um, fish and chips, man. <laughs> Dude, you. They use breakfast ham instead of bacon. Come on, <laughs> it's 2017, people. Uh. So we were about to do the stone run, and um, have our back to the crowd, and they introduced me. They say, and you know, coming out of America, Robert Overs, and I just put my hand like this. Everyone listening can see it, I'm sure, and. Uh, I put my hand up and I just hear twelve thousand people just hating me, <laughs> screaming. And like right now, I'm getting goosebumps. And you oh, loved it, yeah. I fucking uh, loved it. I uh, loved it. Uh, I loved that's it. That's the best. I'll take that. I'll take that all day. And I turn around. We we ran through those stones and I PR'd on everything. I'm one motion to three eighty stone. Wow. Like didn't even wow. lap it. Just put it up, and then ran through everything. Finished the last stone was like f- between four and four twenty. I I don't remember. Then I turned around and walked towards the crowd and just like putting my hands out, just screaming I, at them. I was just going to ask you, <laughs> so is that the most memorable win or moment you've had? Yeah, so far, so far that was the best, man. It was. There's been a lot of great moments along the way, and uh, there's been. I've had I've had way too much fun, but um, 
to do that in front of that kind of crowd, it was great. I it bet. was great. I yeah. bet you were just jacked. Dude. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> oh, good. that's fantastic. Yeah. Do you do any auxiliary work? Do, do you, is that part of strongman training? Things like you know curls and oh, for tricep. Sure. Really? Okay, for sure. Yeah, I mean, you have curls are probably the most neglected for me, but I do them just to make sure they don't tear. It's mm. like. Guys, tear that's kind of common, isn't it? Oh, super common, well, especially stones, on the stone. The, the, the first stone. time I picked a stone up, actually, what I noticed more than anything else was the strain on my bicep. Yeah, yeah. out of everything else, not my bag. Probably my, because you're not used to to that much tension at that extension. Exactly. Right? Oh, yeah, exactly. And it's a weird way of squeezing it. You're like, you know, that like super hug machine at the at the gym where you're squeezing it together. Yeah, and yeah, like, yeah. Do, oh, the yeah. pec deck, pec whatever. Yeah. The super hug machine. <laughs> super <laughs> hug. <laughs> that thing right there, that's like awesome. those muscles are a lot of how you pick it up off the ground too like it's there's just a lot of weird little uh intricacies about uh, with strongman that that you wouldn't really think about like like the biceps and the stones or when you're when you're cleaning an axle um and you got to go over underhand like mm-hmm. i don't know if the listeners like if i could just say over under or yeah that's fine so if you got to go over under and you're going to continental clean it when you pop it up man that thing gets over 330 340 like that's a big bicep curl yeah you know? oh, yeah shit. so I, I do stuff to keep safe there and triceps man triceps has got to be strong so a lot of stuff i do upper back three times a week uh there's you know hamstrings cannot be done enough you, you got to hit everything mm. What are what, if someone were to enter or want to enter into strongman? What would you say that they would need? Like, you know, if someone says, "Hey, I want to do strongman." What should what could they look for in themselves to see if this is something they can do? Well, it all depends on their goal and what they want to do with it. But um, there's a lot of tips uh, on training and how to, to train, even if you don't have equipment. And there's a map uh, with like every gym location in America and more. I think that's it's like all across the globe. It's all on startingstrongman.com. Okay. Like you can you can learn how to practice stones with uh, rubber plates or different things like that. How to practice yoke if you don't have a yoke or log, mm. all that kind of stuff. And um, honestly, it's just like anything else. You just go have some fun, figure it out. Like I've never heard of anyone doing a strongman show for the first time and not having a blast. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I've never heard of that. I got my ass kicked kicked the first time i competed and i had a blast man <laughs> I, I got like seventh out of nine or something yeah do you look at some people though and go like you just you can't you couldn't just didn't yet genetic if if they it's hard you're saying i don't want to like, be mean <laughs> well i mean if you're saying like they want to be the best in the world and they're four sure. foot nine then maybe they're gonna have a hard time but like if you want to just do the sport and be the best you can everybody can do that mm-hmm. and yeah. and the other thing is is Vitotis Lawless is from Lithuania. Man, I want to say he's like 5'5", five, 5'6". Five, five, like, oh, he's wow, tiny. Little. And he got second place. He was in first place at World Strongest Man. How did he get You got to fucking do it. Like, he would pop it up probably amazing. and, like, almost hold it there with like his head. Vertically and then jump it? push yeah. it up over. Wow. Just, if you guys want to see somebody not letting their height hinder them you can look up vitotis lawless you know the thing i re- so years ago uh, i've always been into uh, you know exercise obviously i've been in, in, in fitness for a long time and my goals initially were aesthetic but i always liked strength I admired strength and i read a book uh i think in my i want to so say you're my messing mid- up already you shouldn't be reading books <laughs> <laughs> not good for strong man Idiot. Fuck that. Yeah. No. this jackass no. over here <laughs> you gotta lift weights, son. I'm just playing. I'm no, kidding. but there was, there was a book called uh, Dinosaur Training. I think it was called Dinosaur Training oh. by uh, Kubrick. I think is his last name. Yeah, and he talks about all these odd lifts and stuff. And so I started doing some more reading on strongman training from back in the day and current stuff. Oh yeah. And I started applying some of it to my own training. And I had no intentions in wanting to compete in strongman, but I noticed like muscle building effects. I noticed aesthetic building effects. And there's a lot people can learn. From some of the ways you guys train, even if someone just wants to look better, yeah. you know, if they want bigger back or bigger. Well, a stone, a stone lift has to be one of the oh, most for your functional back? things that we yeah. you do as a yeah. human being because. If anything, there, I've never squatted with something on my back, right? Right, right. but I sure as shit picked up a lot of shit up off it the ground. Balanced yep. perfectly, yep. right? Yeah, it's never so like, like farmers carries farmer stuff. That's, oh, that's super yeah. huge. I do it all the time. Yeah. I love farmer carry. Yeah. So, uh, like, like just think about what a farmer's does. Like, my traps are huge because of that's farmers. Right. My shoulders are built because of log press. Like, yeah, it works, and it's also it's fun. Like when you've been training for any amount of time. 
it's like it gets tedious and you're like, same oh, lift man. barbell yeah. row but you go out there and you're like oh today i'm gonna try and throw up a log or i'm gonna try and pick up these stones mm-hmm. that's exciting it's mm-hmm. fun it's yeah. different one Have thing you that messed I- with the, uh any of the um the celtic games or got into that at i all? did i did one um i won a show in vegas that qualified me for giants live about three years ago and got hammered that night the next morning, we woke up, woke up, and they were having a Highland Games show, yeah. like two blocks from the hotel. I was like, "Fuck it, yeah, let's go do it." And I was beat up yes. and still drunk. Did it, went out there, and everyone's drinking during the show too. Like oh, yeah, Highland that's Games, the they know how to Dude, get down, yes. man. They get yes. down. Yeah. So went out there. Um, we're a drinking culture. <laughs> I, won, I won every single event handily, like ridiculous. And I would like. I would throw the weight and then have to hold my hip with my hand to hobble <laughs> out there to get it. <laughs> and and I, I smashed it. It was a blast. Oh, um, that's awesome. So I'm, I'm actually thinking about going to Redding, California in February. I believe it's February 7th. I'm going to go up there, do a show. It's kind of Strongman Highland Games mix, and the winner gets to go to Norway. So I think I'm going to go do that. Oh, that's, cool. that's awesome. Man, man. I would love to check that out. So, awesome. so moving forward, like what's in the future for you, man? <laughs> What are you looking at? Next up, man, Log World Championships in London. I'm going to kick Eddie Hall's ass, and then I'm going to go to the Oh, Congress, call man. him out. Oh, he knows it. He's been hiding already, man. <laughs> oh, I tried to get him to come out scared. for uh, Manchester. He talked a bunch of shit, and then he knew he was going to get smashed, so he pulls out. He does the log, and then he pulls out. D- uh, dude, he's wrapped up and done, and, and he just won't admit it. So Now, I um, feel like you have a great like attitude about you know when you do it. I feel like you're not uh, being vindictive or talking shit or down to somebody Oh, I'm like talking that. shit. <laughs> I'm definitely talking shit. I'm How do these vindictive. guys receive it? Don't you fool. How do these guys receive <laughs> Don't it? Don't be fooled. Oh, man. Most people, most people uh, are cool with it. There's definitely... There's definitely a lot of people that don't. Do like you it. poke harder than ones? Oh, that- for sure. Oh, yeah. I've got I've got ten siblings, man. Like, oh, yeah. if you you show discomfort in what I'm saying, I'm gonna See, say you it would more. Do good you in know? wrestling, man. Yeah, I know. I would. I would. We yeah. actually I had a meeting. We spoke um, with Vince McMahon a while ago. We talked about it, and um, it just hadn't come together. So it might yeah. it might in the future. Mm-hmm. Uh, my buddy is uh, doing it now. Adam Shear. He's uh, he's Braun Strowman in mm-hmm. WWE, and he's doing great. So, nice. um, we'll that's see. Cool. That's something I wanted to do as a kid. I wanted to do that uh, growing up. That's if if they would have got a hold of me before, like I was like twenty one, I would have done whatever they said. Oh wow! It. But it just never came together. So. Well, well, that's awesome, man. Thanks yeah. for coming on the show, bro. Yeah, dude, yeah, yeah. that's fucking awesome. It's all. It's that you know. Every time I'm around someone that's as big as you are, it's, it just makes me realize that humans. Are not all the same. There's like different categories of human stuff. So. Yeah, but, uh, big, but big and tall store big, shoppers. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, we appreciate you coming on the show. Yeah, That's dude, right. we'll absolutely do this again. And you got to make sure when you, you come, come and visit, you got to come visit us, yeah. man. Up yeah, in yeah, definitely. I'll I'll be there, man. I right. lift I need all to come of home. our weights. Yeah, yeah. yeah. all sure. once. Yeah, we don't for have sure. enough for you. Yeah, we don't. <laughs> We're gonna have to order. We'll figure cool. it out. Yeah. All right, well, check it out. Go to YouTube. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Mind Pump TV. We post a new video every single day. We also offer 30 days of coaching for free at mindpumpmedia.com. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump. <laughs>